what's up guys sean back with another video and we have 400 pounds at 16 my incredible weight loss journey a life in the balance which considering i was probably around 400 pounds at 16 i don't know my scale didn't go that high but i was also i'm pretty sure possessed by a demon at that age named testosterone or testosterone as some people like to pronounce it but yeah, I was a bad kid, so I want to see what's going on in this guy's life, if it kind of mirrors mine in any way. I think it could be interesting. Let's check it out. He's going to have the surgery? For all of his 16 years, Brandon Bennett has been fighting a losing battle with his own body. I am afraid that I could die before my life should be over i didn't even think about that age but uh this kid definitely raided my closet i don't know where he got all my old clothes from but i wore a lot of oversized t-shirts brandon is morbidly obese and his lifespan is shortening with every pound he stops breathing 68 times a night i have to get up and check to see if my son's still breathing he could Damn. die any night if he stopped breathing one more time it would have been kind of funny but Brandon is about no. to take a desperate chance on a Not risky like that. procedure that offers his only hope for living a normal life. Brandon told me, he said, Dad, I would rather take the chance at death than to continue to live in this big body of mine. It's a dangerous gamble, but one that Brandon Bennett is willing to risk. He knows his body is a walking time bomb, and his life hangs in the balance. It's kind of saying a lot or showing you a lot about how you think at that age because your weight has so much to do with your identity and how insecure you are and whether you think everybody laughing in the hallway is looking at you. It's not a good place to be. Mine kind of showed, uh, I, mine turned out into aggression. Like I showed a lot of aggression or a lot of humor. It depended on the day, really. <laughs> Brandon Bennett is 16, an age when fitting in is the ultimate goal. Anyone who's different or stands out from the crowd is likely to face isolation and ridicule. True, but when you get older, you realize that standing out is actually a good thing, and being different is, uh, it's, it's definitely looked more favorably upon once you're older. And for a severely obese teenager, especially one who stands six foot two and weighs 411 pounds, there's no place to hide. When I go to class and, you know, I don't fit in a desk and I got to sit in a different desk than anybody else. Been there, done that. Damn, damn, them, them, <laughs> them damn desk were my nemesis as a kid. But, uh, yeah, you definitely had to find the desk that had more room between it or find a chair that wasn't attached to a desk somewhere in the back. I don't fit in there. I can't go to a professional baseball game or professional football game because I can't fit in the seats. The reactions from the other people can be kind of saddening sometimes. People's eyes get wide and their jaws drop open and, you know, just, whoa, I can't believe how big he is. It's just mean things that, you know, someone doesn't deserve to be called just because they were born big. Some of the names that like I've heard at school is, he's, he's just weird. He sucks. Just weird, he sucks. But, uh, yeah, no, I would Google places before I went there to make sure the chairs were wide enough or like vice versa, not at that age. I probably would have just tried to wedge myself in there and got stuck or something. Had to call the stepbrother rescue team or something. Fuck this and that. Like say, oh, you're big, get away from me. Fat ass. And he's like my best friend and everything. And it's like, I can't like fight them all or whatever, but I mean, I'm, I've heard it all. It just makes me stand out and seem like an outcast sometimes. You know, girls are. First thing to see is looks and everything, pretty much. So, but yeah, I don't remember him ever having a girlfriend. It's I mean, he's not like the ugliest guy on earth or anything, but he's clearly overweight. I had a girlfriend at 16. I treated her like utter trash, and I don't think I deserved her. She was like a saint, but I mean, it was bad. I was such a nasty kid, man. Looking back on it, I'm like, damn, you were really that crappy of a person, Sean. And I want to apologize, but we we see how it ended up. I ended up 600 pounds. She ended up happily married with a family. 
She won that deal, guys. She got the better end of that one. It's a painful experience, but hardly one Brandon faces alone. Teenage obesity is at epidemic proportions. It's estimated that more than 5 million American teens are obese, meaning they are more than 20% above their ideal body weight. Obesity among teenagers has quadrupled over the last... Shut up with your skinny privilege. I'm just kidding, obviously, but yeah, it's bad. ...last 20 years. If the slope of the curve continues and we see the same increase over the next five to 10 years, one out of every four teenagers will be seriously overweight. Easily after 10 years, we're going to be seeing a majority of teenagers, not overweight, but obese. The problem That's kind of a scary thought that we're working in that direction where everybody's just gaining more and more weight. The often starts early. According to the American Heart Association, more than 10% of children aged 2 to 5 are already overweight. Brandon started gaining weight when he was 4 years old, and it never stopped. Brandon was always a little boy in a man's body. I mean, I guess, but I blame little Debbie. That demon, that little temptress, she got me all messed up as a kid. Big man's body. All my life, you know, I was bigger than all my classmates. Here, he's in kindergarten, looked like a fourth, fifth grade kid. He became very withdrawn. Um, he started getting bigger and recognizing that he was different. And it made it very hard on him. He got picked on by all the kids. Um, and he, he was suffering quite a bit. When I was in second grade, after school, when I'd go home, like the sixth graders would beat me up for being big. And other kids would go sharpen their pencils and sit behind me and stab me in the back. Oh, man, that's terrible. Nobody ever did anything like that to me. I don't think I was ever bullied. If anything, I was more of the bully at that point. But, uh, yeah, no, it, you're, you're so nervous at being that overweight as a kid. Everything, you're looking over your shoulder. Everyone's like, every little shadow you see is like, oh, are they talking about me? Is this about me? You miss the stuff that's right in front of you. In your childhood, you're supposed to have a good time, so I actually feel bad for the kid. At that point in Brandon's life... I was sitting in the backyard with him, and I said, you are so cute. And he looked at me, and he said, Mom, I know I'm fat and ugly, so you don't have to lie to me. And I said, my God, you know, this is the way my son feels. That's tragic. His self-esteem definitely took a major hit. I was just willfully ignorant. I thought I was way better than I was, but still insecure on the inside. But outwardly, I projected a different person. Brandon comes from average-sized parents, and his two older sisters were never overweight. So the family couldn't understand why Brandon grew so heavy. At one point, his parents even took him in for testing. We thought for sure there's some bodily organ that's not working right. How could this child get so big? There's one that's working way too much, his tongue. He's tasting a lot of stuff, he's eating too much. I don't think anything else is going on. After he went through those tests, we realized that you know there was nothing medically wrong with him. The pediatrician said that it was in the genes, that he had, it was genetic somewhere down the line. It means that in his family, someone was overweight or someone was obese. If it's not mom and dad, it might have been grandpa or grandma. But I can't blame my grandfather for that. Oh, shit. Well, I can't blame him. He passed away. I'm not going to blame him now, but he was definitely more overweight than anyone else in my family. But genetics are really just contributory to 30% of the problem. 70% of the problem comes from the environment, comes from what that child is consuming on a daily basis. I always say genetics may load the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. Brandon's parents tried to control their son's environment by limiting the amount of calories he consumed. By giving him a three foot long sub? Is that what I just saw? Like when I was younger, my mom would just try to give me like low, lower fat foods and lower calorie foods and less of them. But as I got older, we moved into the more strict diets like the Atkins diet or calorie counting or Weight Watchers. I did Atkins when I was 12. It actually worked pretty well for me. I lost somewhere around 50 pounds, but that was my only successful diet in my life. 
And uh, that was strictly because of girls. It didn't have anything to do with me or like my like wanting more self-esteem. It probably was just women, honestly. Maybe a little bit of it was wanting more self-esteem in myself. Well, I was always on diets, but it never worked. Yeah, I'd lose, you know, five, 10 pounds, but then I'd just gain it right back at plus more. <laughs> What we have found is that children who harbor the gene for obesity have a lower resting metabolic rate than those who don't. What you find is that these kids can put on weight much faster. Brandon puts on probably anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds a year. That's easy. I could have done that in two months, and I think I did at one point, right when my surgery got canceled, and I went crazy on the pecan pies, cheesecake, whatever but then I had to lose it all again, so I just screwed myself in the long run. As Brandon's weight spiraled out of control, every aspect of his life was affected. He couldn't buy clothes his size at most stores. He couldn't fit into seats at movie theaters or take rides at amusement parks. Brandon's whole childhood was one of living on the outside looking in. Clothes, a pain in the ass. It was a little easier for me at that age because everybody was wearing like the 5X, 6S, XTs or whatever. Everyone had those jeans that he has that goes to his ankles or whatever, the open uh, like jean shorts. But yeah, the roller coaster thing, probably the most crushing thing that happened to me at that about that age. I went with some friends to an amusement park. We got all the way to the front, waited in line for an hour. I couldn't fit in the ride. I had to walk back by everybody out of there. And I just remember my soul being crushed. Like, I wanted to cry, but I didn't want everyone to see me cry because big, tough man, you know. If I had a magic wand and I could uh, change that for my son to where he, he wasn't the biggest kid in the school, um, I would do that in a minute just to give him a normal type of life. Brandon's frustration with his weight led him into a vicious cycle of eating more and more. Are you guys a two cheese, like grilled cheese people? Because I'm a one. I don't like that much cheese, but I also would eat four of those in one sitting. He's eating one. I don't know how he's 400 pounds just doing that. Food, it's like a stress reliever. It's a comfort thing. If I'm stressed out or I'm mad about something, then I'll just eat. I mean, when I'd wake up, I'd be hungry. I'd be asking what was for breakfast. But while I was eating breakfast and while I got done with breakfast, I'd be like, well, what's for lunch now? I don't get full that easy. My typical meal, it's big. I don't just eat one plate. You know, I go back for seconds or thirds. I would just get one plate big enough to fit everything on top of it. But yeah, I know what he means. By the time he was a teenager, Brandon was well over 300 pounds. He had passed from obese into what's known as morbidly obese, meaning he was now more than 100 pounds overweight and likely to develop life-threatening health problems. He became insulin resistant, a precursor of diabetes. I was never pre-diabetic, and I'm sorry to the people that are because some of you are mad at me because I said that before, and I saw, how the hell is this guy not diabetic? He's 600 pounds, but I'm sitting here diabetic at like 140, so I'm sorry. I didn't do it on purpose. I swear it wasn't to slight you. Well, the biggest concern about my health is probably my diabetes right now. If I get it, and what will happen if I get it? But the potential for diabetes was just one of his medical problems. As he passed 400 pounds, he entered a category called super obesity. He was now more than twice the size of a healthy counterpart. He hasn't quite reached the infinity fat, but he caught the foodie beatus or whatever, so, uh, yeah, that's not good. And his lifespan was shortening with every pound. Children who are obese face chronic diseases that are related to obesity. They'll be at higher risk for diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease, certain cancers. So there's very real long-term risks to being obese as a child. Some of my health problems are severe sleep apnea, fatty liver, and I also said I had fat in my blood. I have allergies, lower back and knee problems. You can do that? You can like bleed fat? I definitely had the knee problems, back problems, all that, but I didn't know that I was bleeding fat every time I got a bloody nose. High blood pressure and elevated heart rate. I had to take pills every morning for heart medicine. And that's something that a 16 year old shouldn't have to do. At one time, they sent him home from school, and they said he needs to go directly to the emergency room. 
because we think, you know, he might be having a heart attack. And it wasn't just a, a weight issue anymore. It was a health issue, and it got worse. And it's still getting worse. Could you imagine how scary that would be for his mom to hear, like, hey, come get your son. We think his heart is, like, not working. That would terrify the hell out of any mom at that age, like with their kid, you know? Brandon now had to sleep with a CPAP machine to help him breathe because of his severe sleep apnea. Without it, he would stop breathing numerous times every night. His future that. seemed to be one of failing health and most likely an early death. I had one of those, but it was set to like rocket fuel mode. Like, I don't know, that thing must be pushing like 30 PSI or something. All because I chugged NyQuil before the sleep test because I couldn't sleep in some weird building and weird bed. At well over 400 pounds, Brandon Bennett was faced with a desperate future. His health, already causing serious problems, was only likely to worsen. At age 16, he was already a prime candidate for diabetes, heart attack, or stroke. I am afraid that I could die before my life should be over. But Brandon... His family's rich as hell. You see that pool? Like, give him lipo or something. You guys can afford that. Obviously, but that's not going to fix the problem. He's going to have to address everything in his life that makes him overeat, like all the mental stuff and all that. But uh, I have hope for this kid. Brandon decided to take his life in his own hands. He heard about a possible solution. Bariatric surgery. Operations to promote rapid weight loss. I looked it up on the internet and I read some stuff about it. And I went to my mom and told her about it. He would pull me in there and say, Mom, look. Look, I want you to read this. He said, Mom, this is like light at the end of my tunnel. This is, this is something I really want you to look into. The most common form of the surgery is called a gastric bypass. It involves cutting and stapling shut part of the stomach. And it can be dangerous. Some patients... Isn't he too young for the full bypass, though? Because it would be harder for him to just... My understanding is it's harder to absorb vitamins if you get the full bypass. That's why I went with the sleeve, but I also didn't do that much research because I'm stupid. I was just like caveman mode, like, yes, take my stomach, please. I need to lose weight. And I didn't research anything, honestly. Patients have serious complications, and one in 400 die. But the more she saw her son's health deteriorate, the more Allison Bennett began to agree that the surgery might be Brandon's only chance. I have to envision it through my son's eyes. I've seen him. I've seen his life. I've seen his hurt. I've seen his hardships. I've seen, you know, the things he's gone through. And yes, it scares me to death. But if there's a procedure that's going to erase all of his health issues, all of them, reverse them, and give him the normal life, this is priceless. Every mom wants best for their kid, and I can't imagine what seeing your kid suffer or saying that he thinks he's ugly or anything like that would do to you as a parent. I bet it feels terrible to think your son is just that down in the dumps all the time. Brandon's father was not so easily convinced. I immediately objected. Uh, that's absolutely the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You're not going to go through some surgery where, you, where they take your stomach. You know, what are you thinking? What kind of a life would that be? It's not gone for freaking good. Like, it stretches back out. Eventually, you could start eating again. But once Brandon's health was obviously failing, his father's hardline stance would begin to change. The more time progressed and the heavier Brandon got, the more health issues became very obvious, glaring issues that I could no longer dismiss. What a matter of being fat or not being fat. It was a matter of being able to live or being able to die. Even after convincing Brandon's father, they still faced another major hurdle, finding a surgeon willing to perform the gastric bypass operation on a teenager. I was gonna say, I bet that's a tough find because most people would say try it the natural way, but if he's been trying that and been trying that, I'm not against him going this option. I just think he definitely needs to check his willpower and all that stuff. I don't know, man. I'm the last one to speak about that. They cut 90% of my stomach out. And I just found my willpower after that. The number of teens who have actually had the surgery is only in the hundreds. 
There are few studies on the long-range effects, and many in the medical community believe the risks are too high. 20% of adults who undergo these procedures have complications, and those are the adult statistics. We don't know what complications the children will show. Gastric bypass is not a walk in the park here. We're literally replumbing you. We're taking a... Nobody touched my damn plumbing lady, but they definitely took my stomach. But we nobody went in the back door with the plumbing or anything. A teenager, and we're recreating the digestive system. But if you're only 16, you're young. How does this impact upon everything from growth to metabolism? We just don't know answers yet. Every surgeon they contacted told Brandon and his parents to come back when he was 18. By 18, do I wait till he's five, 600 pounds with full-blown diabetes and not able to sleep at all? He stops breathing 68 times a night. Okay, so you gotta be able to get into a strip club to get your stomach cut out is what I figured out. I have to get up and check to see if my son's still breathing. He could die any night. What's his life gonna be like without the surgery? And I think it's a lot bleaker than the risk of having the surgery. After being turned down by nearly 30 doctors, it seemed like they had exhausted their options. But then, a ray of hope. Brandon read about a local hospital that was beginning to perform the surgery on teenagers as part of a clinical study. He contacted the hospital and wrote a three-page letter to the doctors. I just wanted to be a normal teenager and sit in a desk at school, ride in my friends' cars, and play sports like everyone else. If I was to get this surgery, I'd be so thankful for everything. Yeah, I saw something about Six Flags. That's the damn place that did me dirty, too, with that line. I hate you, Six Flags. I'll get even one day. But, uh, yeah, I'd say there's a lot for a kid to go through just being that obese and kind of struggling with their own identity. After a battery of tests, Brandon was accepted into the study, and surgery was scheduled for September 2004. The Bennetts were under the impression that their insurance would pay for the $80,000 procedure. But four days before the scheduled operation, they were stunned to hear that their insurance would not cover the surgery. 80 k I thought it was like 30 but that's a lot of doubloons. Like, you sure you can't try Atkins again, buddy? Like, oh, that's a lot of freaking money. And I'm like, how am I going to tell my son? that you've just turned out the light at the end of his tunnel. We're a few days from surgery. I would never have done that to him. And they cautioned us to keep a close eye on him because at this point, in bariatric patients that get turned down for surgery, they become So here I am, the dad. Okay, well, all I have to really do is come up with $32,000 in 48 hours and everything will be just fine. Uh, yeah, I will say that it's probably a very hope-crushing, even when mine was canceled, I felt some kind of way. But, uh, yeah, it, it's soul-crushing, but at the same time, there's still opportunity to push forward. But your insurance not covering it? That's testy, man. That's a lot of damn money. I, I might try the diet route again at that age. His metabolism should still be rocking somehow. And I was prepared to take out a loan at the bank if we had to, or mortgage the house, or sell the house. No. Yeah. Desperate to help their son, Brandon's parents decided to go public, calling a reporter at the Houston Chronicle. Within days, all of Houston was aware of Brandon Bennett and his fight for life. Why'd they do him dirty, make him do that pose on the front of the paper, man? All the kids at school are gonna make fun of him for that. One woman was especially touched by Brandon's struggle because she had been a gastric bypass patient herself. Her name uh -huh. was Angie Flores, and she worked as a patient liaison at a clinic called Obesity Surgery Specialists. Angie called Real creative name there, Obesity Surgery Specialists. Called Brandon to tell him that not only would they consider his case, they might also be able to find a solution to his dilemma. Well, Brent, I want to show you my picture. I wanted to show you my before and then my after. 
She went from just being like a tiny bit overweight to looking like a skinny Roseanne kind of person. After my surgery, I went to Astral. I've done the roller coasters she and the though. bungee jump. You know, well, I'll go with my friends and they'll be like, you want to ride this ride? That's it. Can't. I understand. I'll wait for the next one. Yeah. Well, I promise you this, Brandon. As soon as you've lost enough weight, we'll go. Okay. We'll go. I'll take you. Sounds fun. Yeah. Is she making a move on Brandon? Because I think this is a crime. We're witnessing a crime. For the next few hours, Brandon's case was thoroughly evaluated. The family returned home, encouraged by the day's events. It's really amazing that that Angie lady would call out of the blue. Angie is an angel. People like that are hard to find. But they knew the decision still rested with the clinic's medical staff. After so many rejections. Is that, what's that say? Zippo Zoo? Is that some kind of like fat burner or something? I think everybody tried damn, tr like, what is it, Trim Spa back in the day? The Bennetts braced themselves for another denial. Later that night, they finally got the answer. We just received a phone call before this interview started that said that they will accept Brandon as a patient. They normally do not treat children. And not only would they accept him as a patient, that they would do it as a courtesy, and it would no be, be no charge to the family. Damn, that paper move really played off. It just or rewrote my son's whole future. I mean, how do you thank somebody for that? The hospital, the doctor, the clinic, it's unbelievable. I was just speechless that he said it would be for free. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought? Today was a good day. It's one of the best days of my life. The lady that had found me and read my article, she had also had the surgery. So she came up to me and said, I'm going to take you to the amusement park when you get your surgery. So that was special. Oh, man, this is like some heartwarming stuff. I'm not used to this. I'm more of the joke around type. I don't like to get all hit right in the feels or anything like that. Come on, Brandon, don't make me feel this way. That's sad, but good for him. For two years, Brandon Bennett had struggled to get the gastric bypass surgery he desperately needed. After his insurance company refused to pay for the operation, Brandon went to the media with his story. Within days, an obesity clinic came forward with an astonishing offer. You have a 16-year-old whose social, emotional life has already been damaged by his morbid obesity, and his health is being seriously impacted, and he can't get treatment for it. So it didn't take us long to decide that this is what we needed to do and offer the surgery free of charge. Hey, Brandon. Brother Marvin, nice to meet you. This is my physician's assistant, Al Mergen. I do think socially is probably the worst aspect of being a kid that's overweight because you're just so insecure. And uh, he definitely is showing signs of that. I wish he had more confidence in himself because it's not like he's that. Like to me, that's damn normal looking right there. That's about where I was. That would have been low for me, but all right. I, I guess he just can't find his voice or anything like that. Nervous and excited, Brandon met with the doctor who would perform the surgery. Okay, Brandon, why don't we go ahead and lay back flat, please? Okay. Can you bring your shirt up to about this level? Yes. Although Dr. Robert Marvin had never performed the surgery on someone this young, Brandon's extreme medical problems convinced him to offer his services. He could have a stroke, he could have a heart attack. And I hate to see him have a heart attack at a young age uh, simply because he's overweight. Dr. Marvin explained the details of the surgery in which a section of Brandon's stomach would be cut off and formed into a pouch roughly the size of an egg. Effectively, a new stomach. A piece of the small intestine would then be attached to the pouch, bypassing the old stomach, which would be stapled shut. Okay, so to explain what happened to me, they cut my stomach like a banana shape that could fit like an egg, but there was no moving of the intestine and reconnecting it or anything like that. I didn't want to go that route because I had heard that it's harder just to 
absorb vitamins and nutrients moving forward if you go that route food just kind of passes straight through you i wanted the little pouch which over time will allow me to eat more but i just have to stay more disciplined but i didn't want to go the full bypass route at least that's my understanding while they up there the new smaller stomach would limit the intake of food yet still create a sense of being full when we get you sit up the result here. rapid weight loss and the health benefits that would come with it. Nationwide, more than 700,000 people have had the surgery, with an average weight loss of 100 pounds in the first year. But That's it? Uh, I guess most people aren't as damn big as me, so I guess we can't put them to the same standards, but I lost like 90 pounds in the first three months. The procedure is largely untested on teenagers. Would someone as young as Brandon face serious medical complications years later? No one could be sure. Dr. Marvin also warned the family about the potential risks from the surgery itself. The two main things we worry about in the early period after the operation are blood clots that form in the veins of the legs. If they break off and travel up to the lungs, that's called a pulmonary embolus, and that can be a fatal thing. You can die from that. The other thing we worry about is a leak, because if some of the juice inside the intestine can get out, and infect the rest of the abdominal space. The chance of that happening is very small, but that's a thing we really watch for very closely in the early part. I didn't worry about a leak. I don't even think I thought that was a possibility, but I did have to take these little injections in my stomach morning and night for about a month, and they want you to get up and move around a lot just so you don't get a clot. That's why a lot of the times on My 600 pound Life, you hear them say, we won't do the surgery until you're mobile. It's because they don't want them to get a clot. Post-operative period. You know, there, it is life-threatening. Um, he could die for this surgery. And Brandon told me, he said, Dad, I would rather take the chance at death than to continue to live in this big body of mine. So this is a chance that I want to take. The night before surgery, Brandon's family takes him and several of his friends out for what is jokingly referred to as the Last Supper. Last Supper syndrome is no joke. I don't know why they're taking him out to eat beforehand. My surgery was canceled because I went ahead and went friggin' ham on the cheesecakes. I took it all, buddy, and I didn't lose any weight. I think I actually gained. They canceled it. And that's when I just went full F this mode because I also was dealing with the Rona at the time. Everything was getting postponed. I just was so lost. I thought it was never going to happen. So I lost my damn mind and turned to food again and then had to lose it all again. But I don't know why they're taking him out to eat. Sorry for that rant. It's the last supper to this life and then I get to start a new one. It's the last time Brandon will be able to eat as much as he wants. As in Cinderella, the clock will soon chime. Before the surgery, I have to stop eating at midnight. That way, my stomach is empty. By the time the... I can't believe they're letting him eat that much, and instead of a slipper, he got sushi? Like, I don't understand the Cinderella comparison here. Evening is over. The festive atmosphere quickly fades. As Brandon's parents face the fact that tomorrow is a life-or-death situation for their son. And of course, as, as parents, you know, we don't want to put our children in harm's way in any way. I mean, it should be okay, but you know, there's a chance. And uh, if something were to happen, we just have to remember it's what he wanted. It's never 100%, but like the chance of something going that wrong are relatively low. I think you probably more at odds with your guys' BBLs you get to copy Nicki Minaj, but yeah, there's still a risk. It's surgery. October 28, 2004. In the pre-dawn hours, Brandon and his parents set out for Houston's Renaissance Hospital, a journey they hoped would change his life forever. Isn't that where Dr. Now was early on? Is he going to see Dr. Now? Like, you lucky. The Bennett's had no idea what would be waiting for them. Brandon's story had struck a chord with the media and the community. Most of the TV stations in town were there to cover the event. Suddenly, the kid who was always on the sidelines was now the center of attention. 
imagine your parents being worried if you're going to get through this. And friggin' Channel 5's here, like, asking you all these questions. Let the kid have some time with his parents. Let them be at peace with the whole surgery process. You don't have to make it a big spectacle, but I guess this is kind of part of the, hey, we're paying for this, we need this film, like, so we can make some money or something. How you feeling this morning? I feel excited, I'm tired, I'm anxious just to get it done. And through it all, Angie Flores was at his side. Our whole life is going to change. Everything. There's not one thing in my life that has remained the same. Except for your hair. I hit me hard last night. I was like, it's pretty cool. One of the questions Brandon asked me was, uh, if it hurt. And I told him, yeah, it hurts. Don't do it. felt like you got run over by a car. You don't feel like that. It just feels like you got a burp and like uh, it won't go away. It, you can't hold anything down that well. You're sipping on a protein shake. It don't feel good. That's for damn sure. But in a couple of days, that pain is gone. Your new life is beginning. You're shedding your weight. Having gone through it herself, Angie had become more than Brandon's patient liaison. She had become... Yeah, the pain don't go away in a couple of days. It goes... Pro you probably won't feel it so much after about a month or so. But I was up and about in two days. But you gotta get through the whole liquid stage first. That's the hell, man, when you're only eating sugar-free popsicles nonstop. I'm his friend and guardian angel. I understand what they're going through, and they know I'll be there for them. I'll walk them through it. I'll hold their hand if that's what it takes. This is a dip up on the scale. You're gonna get your weight. During his pre-op exam, Brandon weighed in at a deadly 411 and a half pounds. Twice as much as he should weigh for his age and height. Shit, if that's deadly, what the hell was I? One foot in the damn grave, obviously. Bendix still there? Yes. No gallbladder surgery? No. By 9.30, Brandon was in his room being prepped for surgery. And what grade are you? 11th. 11th grade? With the operation just minutes away, Brandon was calm and relaxed, but his parents were filled with anxiety. How do you describe being happy and sad, or hopeful and fearful at the same time? My father, you are happy. How would you like me? Yeah, it's hard, but it's always his life. apprehensively enthusiastic is what I would call it because I'm sure that they're absolutely just terrified but part of them knows that this is what their son wants and he'll be much happier with it. So as his mother I can only kiss him, tell him I love him and pray oh. that they do a good job. Shortly after, well, nobody sitting there crying, telling me bye. Do I just suck or something? Like, does nobody love me? No, I'm kind of pissed. I didn't get any like passionate or anything like that send off. I just kind of was like, all right, guys, see you when I don't have a stomach. After 10 a.m., Brandon is wheeled out of his room and into the OR. If all goes well, the surgery should take less than two hours. Dr. Robert Marvin has performed dozens of bariatric surgeries but never on a patient as young as Brandon. Even he feels the tension of the moment. I feel a little bit nervous, but I think sort of like uh, an athlete would be right before a, the event. Uh, once it starts, we'll get down to business and concentrate on what we need to do. His smaller stomach is designed to reduce food intake. A shorter intestine means less time for what he does eat to be broken down and digested. It's a two-pronged that's what I meant by the absorption and all that. I was worried about, obviously, if it's going straight through you, it's not absorbing into your stomach. You're going to have a problem with nutrients and stuff like that. And ...approach to cutting the calories his body absorbs. Brandon has been in surgery for over an hour. I'm concerned, worry. You know, as parents, I think that... I think all parents would be very worried at this point. We have a lot of confidence in the staff, but... You know, there's there's a chance things could, could go wrong, so we're, we're afraid. I'm sure they're terrified, but 
Uh, hopefully everything goes swell and nothing goes bad here. But, I don't know. There always things could happen. We're all done. Everything went fine. Everything went exactly as we expected it would go. Okay, so that's got to be a relief for the parents who were sitting there nervous as hell the entire time. Uh, there was nothing unusual about the surgery. So it was about an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, he's okay. He's fine. He's in recovery room. Nothing got nicked at all. It was put together back no, together. No, perfectly. no nicking. Good. No nicking, no bleeding. We're just, just beside ourselves. Good jump for joy, I imagine. Now we watch for other problems, things like bleeding from the staple lines and stuff that can show up immediately after the surgery or obviously respiratory complications after general anesthesia. But in terms of the procedure itself, there was nothing unusual. I think that's the thing they're most nervous about when you're that overweight is keeping you breathing just because the anesthesiologist or whatever has to sit there, watch you, whatever. I think they have like a little, I think they have an electronic kind of pump now instead of just the little hand one they used to use. I don't know. I'm not a friggin' doctor. By 2.30, Brandon begins to come out of the anesthesia. How you doing, man? You starting to come out better? Well, you did good. The doctor said you did great. You don't feel good. You hurt a lot. We're here for you. After a few hours in recovery, it's important for Brandon to get up and walk to help prevent blood clots from forming in his legs. The media is there to document his first steps. You also get to have fun and flirt with the nurses, which is probably the best part about being in the hospital. Good job, Brando. Brandon spends the night at the hospital. The next morning, he's cleared to leave. So, Brandon, are you ready to go home? You feeling okay? Yeah. Great. Well, the doctor released you to be discharged, so uh, said everything looks fine. You look great. Everything else looks great. You feel great. You feel okay. I got wheeled out too just because I guess that's just kind of routine to wheel you out even if you can walk but they kept me two nights they kept him one one's kind of regular they kept me two just in case because of how overweight I was with the surgery behind him Brandon is about to begin his new life but will his body accept the drastic changes made during the operation Let's and go, Brandon. does Brandon have the will to change the way he's lived his life for the past 16 years for sure, changing everything. It's been one month since Brandon Bennett had the gastric bypass surgery that he hopes will turn his life around. Before surgery, Brandon topped the scales at 411 and a half pounds, a weight that was literally killing him. If he's been a month, he should be about to like the ground beef, tuna, stuff like that, kind of semi-solid foods soups and all that kind of stuff, I think, is what you get to after a month. Brandon's goal is to lose 170 pounds, which would put him at 240. Okay, a little less than I want. Today will be Brandon's first opportunity to see if he's on track. Step up here. As he returns to the obesity surgery specialists and the scale. The demon. Okay, it's 378. He lost 33 and a half pounds. All right, so he's cooking right off the bat, which is a good thing. I'm just worried about once he gets through the honeymoon stage and thinks he can start eating normally again. That's when everybody starts to F up. The time I'm at right now is when I could screw everything up. So I just got to stay focused, keep eating good. I'm doing a little keto experiment right now I've been doing for the last 10 days. And I want some carbs so damn bad I could chew my leg off, but I just can't have them. Very good. Losing a pound a day is the average weight loss for patients during the first month. At 378, Brandon is right on target. Sounds it makes right. you feel pretty good that I've lost that much, but I can't really tell the difference yet. For most of the last month, Brandon has been on a post-surgery diet of soft food and liquids. But now he's starting to eat solid foods again. Yep. And that's where some of the biggest challenges lie. Although the surgery shrinks the stomach, many patients run into problems if they try to return to their old eating habits. 
The stomach is an elastic muscle, and it can definitely stretch out again. How do you explain? The second you start to feel full, stop. Don't keep eating. You're going to overeat. You'll throw up. Like, there's a lot of things you need to learn after the surgery, but finding the foods that agree with you is probably the hardest part. ...to a 16-year-old that his portion sizes are going to change and that if he doesn't really change his portion sizes, long-term, he will regain the weight. You say eat less or you'll get fat and not ride a roller coaster again. Like, what else is there to say? Okay, what can you eat? Brandon meets with dietitian Sonny Gornick to discuss the rules he will have to follow for the rest of his life. We want to make sure it's a healthy diet. Basically a high protein, a low fat, low saturated fat um, kind of diet. Uh, remember your, your pouch is about the size of an egg, so just make sure that you, you're not over. How do you know how big his pouch is? That's a whole suspect. We're doing it. It's kind of like learning all over how to eat. The biggest adjustment will be keeping the portion size down. Although Brandon is free to eat a wide variety of foods. I have a piece of pizza the other day. And how did that do? That went fine. Okay. Why the hell are you eating pizza that soon? Oh, this ain't gonna go good. He's gonna lose the weight and then I'd like to know where he's at today. I might try to find him. Okay, so you're still able to live a completely normal lifestyle. You know, you can still go out with your friends. You can still go do what you usually did before. It's just that, you know, you're not eating a number three you know, supersized or anything like that. The teenager who easily put away double or triple servings at every meal now gets by on less than half of a single serving. That looks good, but I'm also shocked he could put down pizza because the acidity and the tomatoes messed me up at first. The first, like, two weeks were the hardest. And then it got easier, and now it's just pretty much a normal thing. My grocery bill's going to go down tremendously. <laughs> it does. To make sure he gets all the nutrients he needs given his smaller meals, Brandon takes a daily regimen of vitamins and supplements. Uh, that bariatric vitamin made me so... Oh, it, was, it didn't taste anything like mixed wild berries to me, guys. But, uh, yeah, I neglected that vitamin. Don't do that. It'll make you dizzy. It'll make you not feel good. I started taking the vitamin again. I started to feel good again. This is especially crucial for teenagers after bariatric surgery. Tastes good, Many of them don't get anywhere near the amount of calcium, let alone protein, that they need to be able to, you know, maintain healthy, strong bones. If they're not taking it through supplements, how else are they going to get it? But diet isn't the only radical change in Brandon's lifestyle. Hey! For maximum results, Brandon must exercise on a regular basis. At the gym, I always do cardio, which is either the treadmill or the elliptical or the bike in between. All right, let's go Brandon. So maybe I'm wrong about him. He's changing everything about his lifestyle, what he does. I'm hoping he's a success story because I hate to hear kids say they're kind of down and out. They don't believe in themselves. They're struggling. Between those, I'll do my muscle workouts. Ready? Push off. I enjoy working out. After I get done working out, I usually feel more energized than before. It's now two months after surgery, and Brandon's lost another 26 pounds. He's at 353, almost 60 pounds less than before his operation. He's cooking. He'll be under 300 in no time at this rate. Yeah. Hey, did you see my new watch? Oh, wow. Got you, man. At a family gathering, Brandon's new slimmer look takes his relatives by surprise. He looked great. He looks healthy. It's just a phenomenal change in him. There is a sparkle in his eye. He just looks uh, so wonderful. He looks happy. A miracle to see the turn in him. It feels pretty nice to hear that from somebody you hadn't seen in a while, that you look pretty good since you lost some weight. That's probably the best thing. Like, I was at Walmart, ran into a kid I hadn't seen in a while, and he was like, Holy shit, I didn't recognize you walking down the aisle right in front of me until I said hi to him. But yeah, you, it's, it's a good feeling for sure. But Brandon does... Why do we edit it to make it look like he made the shot? He can miss a damn shot. ...doesn't stop there. For the next several months, he dedicates himself to stepping up his exercise program and sticking to the new diet. 
the results speak for themselves when he returns Damn. to the clinic for his six-month checkup. All right, Buddy's lost a lot of weight, more than I would have even expected. He's killing it. Oh. He's just looking at the roller coaster cougar again. Yes. Come on in, Brandon. Let's weigh. See what you're at right now. You look amazing. Go ahead and step on it. Take the shoe. Yeah, definitely take the shoes off. Oh my goodness. 295 Damn. pounds. That's only five pounds more than I am right now. That's it's a major milestone for Brandon. The last time he weighed less than 300 pounds. He was 12 years old. He's now yeah. lost more than 115 pounds. In most cases, a patient will lose 70 to 75% of their extra body weight in the first two years. Exactly, I just passed the two year mark. September 29th was my surgery, like 2021. Brandon is right on target to meet that goal. I'm playing a lot more basketball now, now this summer and everything. Okay. Your outcome's been been terrific so far. And so his weight loss is where it should be? Right, but even more importantly, the, his other medical problems gone away. Six months ago, when he visited the same clinic, Brandon suffered from high blood pressure, severe sleep apnea, was borderline diabetic, and a prime candidate for a heart attack. Today, his test results show no signs of any of these conditions. Okay, so he's already reaping the benefits of changing his lifestyle, changing his diet. Okay, why don't you go ahead and lay back flat? Check your stomach real quick. That's the real reason to get control of the weight so you can get rid of those other medical problems that obesity causes. Your weight loss should continue up to 18 months to two years, so I uh, expect some more to come off. This is clearly a case where, where the treatment works, and as a physician, that's what you go into medicine for, to see something like that. And, but this you know what my surgeon does to me every time I'm in there? Like, he makes you lay down, he looks at your stomach to see how you're doing, the loose skin and stuff, but then he just pulls your pants off because he wants to look at your fupa, and he always has, like, medical students in there with him. I'm like, if I drop my pants in front of these women in public, like, I go to jail. Are we sure this is all right? Like, can we do this? This is extremely gratifying from a personal standpoint as a, as a doctor and as a surgeon. My name's Dorian. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, How you doing? Nice to meet you. Hello, Dorian. How you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. Brandon's dramatic weight loss has opened up all the avenues to a normal life he'd hoped it would. Pretty much everything, huh? Including being able to trade in the truck he's had to drive. What's wrong with that truck? A lot of people want that damn truck. You don't want it? I wish I had a truck when I was a kid just so I could do all kinds of crazy shit with a truck bed and going off-roading and stuff. I chose the truck because, you know, I was pretty big and I couldn't fit into a smaller car. But now it's not practical to have that big of a vehicle, so I'm looking at a little Scion XB, which I wouldn't have been able to fit in before. You want to go to a friggin' like box on wheels from that nice truck? I'm definitely wondering about this kid's judgment at this point. I didn't think I would be able to fit in one. And even in the back seat, I couldn't fit in the back seat. He just lit up, you know, it was kind of neat to see, even though we didn't get the car. <laughs> By June. We, um, give the kid a block of soap or something. He wants something that square, but also it looks like he picked up a little girly friend. Brandon has lost another 19 pounds. Is that a sister? I hope not. He's down to 276 <laughs> and has become confident enough to begin dating several girls. Several, you horn dog, you. How dare you? He's out here playing the damn field. Jamie Grosjean, his lunch companion today, is a longtime friend. I've been going to school with Brandon since in inter intermediate school. He's a great friend. Just, he's just one of those people you can connect with real easily and just talk to. You ever eaten quail? Um, it's like little tiny chickens. I will tell you at that age, we are like not your friends. We're just waiting for a chance to swoop in when some guy breaks your heart. Most men that are friends at that age are secretly thinking of how they can sleep with you. But I'm, I'm just the messenger. I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> 
the biggest change I've seen in Brandon is definitely his personality. Just He's just so more out there, more excited, and wants to talk to more people. Are you full? I know you're probably full. Yeah, I am pretty full, actually. How much could you used to eat? Would you be able to eat all of this? I'd be able to eat more than all of this. He's got to feel better about himself, you know? So he carries himself better. He's more positive around girls. I think he's more positive in general, but that's just that whole change of perspective you get from your confidence kind of going up through the roof. One of Brandon's long-standing goals was to find a part-time job. He had interviewed for several jobs before the surgery, but was always turned down. They just told me I was too big and that they wouldn't hire me because of it. What are you talking about? When I was 16, they hired my fat ass to push carts at Target. I think they wanted me on a diet plan for Target or something, but they will give you a job if you're fat. It don't matter, man. Not at that age. But now he's reached another milestone. Why did I talk about that? Can I get these out of y'all's way? He's landed a job at a local restaurant. And it's a measure of how far Brandon has come, that he can work in a restaurant and still resist the old temptations. I'll eat the food, I just don't eat much. I like how it tastes. Oh, that's kind of a recipe for disaster. When you could start eating more and you're getting that nice ass Cajun food, that's gonna be trouble if he doesn't control himself. But it doesn't bother me to be around all the food, you know? It's not that big of a deal. I just think he's one of the most special kids I've seen in a while. He's a team player. He's never can burden him with too much. He's ready to go. He certainly has inspired me. <laughs> and I think he's inspired everybody around here. We all love him. And Brandon continues to inspire others facing the same dilemmas he did only seven months ago. Obesity surgery specialists invites him back to speak to an audience considering weight loss surgery. Someone just messaged me the other day asking if I would go talk to like a little, I forget what they called it, little group of people, auditorium type style stuff. It's hard at first. I mean, nothing can prepare you to stop eating, even if you get the psychiatry or anything. But, I mean, you'll move on, because after a while, it's just not important to eat anymore. I mean, I, I used to love to eat. I still do love to eat, but I just, you know, take a taste now, and if it tastes good, it tastes good. I just don't feel like eating anymore. Thank you. Yeah, because you're fresh off the surgery, but I will say you kind of have to hold your head high and move in a better direction with purpose and know what you want for your future and not fall into old tendencies that are going to mess you up. But as long as you're driven and focused and you don't want to slip back into that old lifestyle, you can't be defeated. Like, you just got to keep pushing forward, keep focused, you'll be fine. Good luck with the surgeon. He is very easy to talk to. He answers emails all the time from people all over the world thinking about the surgery. Brandon uh, will take his knowledge and share it and then help these people get the help that they're so scared to ask for. Yeah, he was kind of thrust right into fame with the whole news crew and stuff like that. I don't know, I get messages from people that are 600 pounds, but they're pretty like rare and few and far in between. Beyond the medical benefits, Brandon's finding that his energy level is rising. At the same rate, his pounds are falling. I could play basketball longer now than I used to be able to, you know. I'll play for, you know, about an hour and a half instead of, you know, 30 minutes. Walking up and down the stairs is also a big difference. You know, I used to just go up, you know, at night when I needed to go to sleep and I'd come down when I needed to leave. Stairs suck. It gets better when you lose some weight. But also, somebody pump up that damn basketball. What are you doing? Now I'll go up and down, you know, whenever I need to. He's just, like, totally changed. And then he just also looks lighter and everything. His face is more thinner and everything. By now, Brandon's thinning out so much, his old clothes have become a fixture at local charities. He no longer needs those size 56 pants. I feel 
Finder 60. I kept one pair of my old clothes just so I could take pictures in them if I wanted. I gave the rest away. I feel like I'm looking better. I mean, I can wear different clothes. It used to be different types of clothes that wouldn't make my size, but now more places carry my sizes so I can go shopping a lot more different places. That's a lot of fun. Brandon used to favor a hip hop look that allowed him to wear baggy clothes to hide his body. I think we all went that route. The real slim shady, please obese up. Like, yeah, that, that happened. But now that he can wear regular sizes, he seems to be headed for a more traditional look. Oh, dignified. Brennan sees the change himself. In the past, he would continue to grow and grow and grow, and now he's watching himself get smaller and smaller and smaller. And I'm sure that he even stands in the mirror in amazement, as we do when we look at him. Yeah, you go from hating the mirror to looking at it, but don't become obsessed with how great you look or anything. I joke about that all the time. But no, some people become very vain, I think is the word, and they're just so obsessed with their looks. But you can be ugly inside and look better on the outside, so you got to be a good person. Each day is a new day for him, and just a new skinny day. Now, me and Brandon skinny are King. able to do a lot more things than we used to be able to do. Everything just seems a lot better. We can go to... He's a cool guy. When I was just hearing his friends, it, it was really frustrating, you know? I was too big, you know? I was too top-heavy, you know what I mean? It was so hard for me to get on it. I couldn't stay on it, but I was like, I don't want to ever go just skiing again. I imagine being 600 pounds on that thing, I'd probably bog it down too much. We'd take on water, it would be a bad day. I've never been on a jet ski. No, it's different. He just seems to enjoy life a lot more. We can go to Astro World and go enjoy the uh, roller coasters there, or water parks, and he feels a lot more confident with just wearing a bathing suit than he used to. So that's a real great change to see him. One year ago, Brandon Bennett weighed 411 pounds. In a high school with more than 3,000 students, he was by far the biggest kid in school. I'd say don't lose your confidence no matter how big you are. Just You gotta be kind of comfortable with who you are as a person. Even if you're going through some stuff, whatever, know you're still a good person most of the time, but a lot of people will sink into depression. I know that's tough. His obesity isolated him from many of his classmates and limited his ability to take part in normal high school activities. But today marks a new beginning. Brandon will be going back to school with what is virtually a new identity. Wait, you got 10 months out of school for the surgery? Shit, you could have signed me up at that age. Today is the first day of school for my senior year. I'm excited to see everybody's reactions. That's one of my main things. I mean, I don't know what most of them are going to say. Ten months after undergoing gastric bypass surgery, Brandon Bennett has lost a staggering 170 pounds. Damn. He's gone from a size 56 waist to a 38. Okay, so Buddy was cooking in the gym, just working like crazy. Now he gets to go back, show it off. That's gotta be a good feeling. From a 7X shirt size to an XL. Seven? From 411 pounds to his target weight of 240. It's a radical transformation, but will it be enough to turn the heads of his classmates? What's up, dudes? It's like awesome. January. Dude, Dude, good, man. You have changed, man. Good. Wow. Yeah. Duh, but also, Buddy and him were wearing, like, the same t-shirt. That's a little embarrassing. Thanks, uh, right. So good. Thank you. My first day's been great at school. Look at you. Oh, you look great. Oh, thank you. Wow. Everybody's just happy to see me. They saw how much I've changed. Even teachers that didn't recognize me when I came back, and they all of a sudden, they were like, are you Brandon? Hey, you're looking wonderful. Thank you. We look so good.
I don't think I would have got that response from teachers. Half of them wanted me expelled. The other half somewhat liked me because I was nice. But I also had a damn crisis pass saying if I lost my temper, I could walk out of class. So just straight demon at 16, Sean. Thank I you. love your blue awesome. shirt. There's Shaq to see me. How are you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Great. Thank you. You look great. So welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be back. Yeah. Is something good? Yeah, it was all right. So it's been a good first day. What's that? And it's only the beginning. It's definitely... Um, that side by side looks crazy. A lot easier being a smaller body size, and I don't have to worry about you know being late to class because I can't walk that fast. It's easier to maneuver in the halls when there's all those people in there because I can move around in there. So he talks to everybody. Ooh, buddy's already making a move. A lot more. He's just more open. Like he's happy, and I'm happy for him. He's more confident around people, around all his friends, around girls, and everything. He's just like totally changed. Before, he really didn't have a lot of luck with the ladies. More Now I think more it's like they're kind of like, oh, he's cute. Wasn't this guy Napoleon Dynamite? And listen that. I don't have to worry about, you know, weight being the first thing on a girl's mind when I'm talking to her. Because it's not that big of a subject anymore. In fact, today there is a special girl in his life. We just started hanging out probably like over the summer. The time that me and Angie mm -hmm. spent together, I mean, we just kind of hang out and have fun. She wants some of your fame from that news article, buddy. Well, he always like reminds me of like how like big he used to be, but I don't even remember him being that big. I, whenever I think of him, I think of him the way he is now. How was your day at school? I'm proud of him. Not a lot of people could, you know, go through all that and he did it. And, he made it out, you know, perfect, and he's doing good, and I'm glad he's healthy. I'm glad he is too, but you know how hard it is to see yourself any differently after you lose some weight? Like, I'll still walk into a room and just assume that I'm the fattest one in there, even if I'm not, but it's just, it's a mentality that's hard to get out of, knowing that you've lost some weight and done some good. I just really like her. She's a good friend. She's a good person. Okay, so that's Brandon. He did friggin' awesome. The guy lost a ton of weight. 183 pounds. He only weighed 411 to start. But uh, I'd be kind of curious to see what are the side effects from having the surgery that young. Hopefully nothing bad. But his confidence definitely took like a major upswing. He definitely feels better about himself. He's dating. I don't know. Your insecurities at that age with being overweight are just so damn many. And it's so, I want to say traumatic to be that young because you're constantly thinking everyone's talking about you. It sucks, it's nerve wracking, you're anxious, you either lash out, use humor like I did, but this kid seemed to be doing very well and it looks like he has a whole new bright future and that's all because of his hard work. So uh, good job, Brandon. I wish you the best and uh, hopefully you kept up on your weight loss or didn't put any weight back on, but uh, I'll see you guys. Bye.